Welcome back everybody to our budget builds monthly series and the month of December. Now the holidays are rolling around soon. Let's check out what we have for our final episode of season one. If you're watching us for the first time, thank you so much for joining us. Let's check out how we actually fill out these request forms. At the top, we have our budget. Prices are in USD. Budget builds do not include any tax fees or Windows keys, unless asked otherwise. Type of system we have is gaming, working combined. Form factor preferences. This will determine case sizes. You can have mini ITX all the way up to XL ATX, or if you have no preference. We have our CPU and a GPU preferences. If you want an Intel CPU, AMD CPU have no preference, NVIDIA GPU, AMD GPU, no GPU preference. Now, if you want me to include the Intel GPUs, just go ahead and write it in other. Areas of focus include our CPU, cooling, motherboard, memory, storage, GPU, case, and power supply. Pretty much anything you want me to focus on specifically. Now, this will be affected by your budget. If you have less of a budget to work with, we cannot focus on anything too great. For example, if you have a $500 budget and you want to focus on CPU and graphics card, it will be very difficult to get a balance of the two. You're going to have to really focus on one, but... Don't worry, you can just go ahead and select your areas of focus and we will try to work with it as best as we can. If you've already purchased or own any current system component you wanna use in the next build, you can go ahead and you can write it in the text answer below. For example, if you have a 500 gigabyte M.2 SSD or an 850 watt gold power supply or a case, anything will help bring that price down. Any peripherals you need, like a mouse, keyboard, a monitor, any headset, and then any other requests you can write in here. And don't forget to fill out this next month's Google form, links down in the description below. Quick disclaimer, the budget builds will be as close or slightly over the budget due to part availabilities, any sales going on at the time of recording, as well as we are not including OS keys or peripherals unless asked otherwise. Unless we have budgetary constraints, four builds will be coming out of this, two AMD and two Intel both on the previous and newest generation. This is to ensure flexibility and upgradability to future-proof it. Uh, at the end of the video, we will be comparing each system to each other and displaying the pros and cons of each build. So then we can figure out which is the best build for the current price. All right, we got a response on our Google form. Let's see what we got. This user has a budget of 475 USD. Okay, not bad. Has a gaming system. No preference in form factor, no preference in GPU. Wants to focus on storage and graphics card. Ah, okay, they already have stuff, that's why. They have an iPasson gaming desktop. Okay, so they got a pre-build with an i5-10400F, GTX 1650, 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200, 500 gigabyte SSD, and Windows 11 Home. Say they want a better graphics card, then more storage. SSD is preferred, but hard drive is fine. Now, the only issue I find with that response is they kind of didn't tell us how much storage they want. So we're actually going to have a few variances, but it's probably just going to be like anything else where we're only going to have like two or three bills that relatively change, but they're just going to show you probably better. St it's just going to vary between better storage and better graphics cards, but we'll get there. No per peripherals wanted and no other requests. So... Now that we know what the user wants and has, let's check out their build. I was putting the user system together just to see what we have. And I've noticed that because they said it's a pre-build, they never put their power supply. And I went looking and found the pre-build actually on Walmart and Newegg. But nothing in this description actually states what kind of power supply it has. Now the thing about these lower end pre-builds is... They could have something as simple as a 550 watt. And I don't want to like overspec the power supply when it comes to doing this stuff. So we'll be safe and just put a 650 watt power supply just as a temp holder. If we can find a power supply that actually fits this computer, we'll put that. But just for now, we'll put a 650 watt so we can get on with putting the user's system together. So I went ahead and I put together their parts list here. I mean, this is just pretty much everything they have in the pre-build. So just a reminder that these are just placeholders. So let's check out what we have for our graphics card heavy. Now we will be doing 
new end use components specifically only for the video card starting with our graphics card and our hard drive i got us an rtx 3070 with a 500 gigabyte western digital blue for our 475 everything else pretty much stays the same user if you're watching this you're going to need to upgrade your power supply regardless if you upgrade any components right 650 watts is kind of pushing it for the 3070 you'd rather upgrade to like a 750 watt or even 850 watt and then you can continue down the line of upgrading all your components of course if you don't have a 650 watt power supply in your system and it's actually 750 watts you're good you're good i just couldn't find any documentation on this pre-build that states it's power supply moving on to our graphics card and an ssd we have that rx 7700 xt from power cooler and a one terabyte PNY CS900. So sitting at that 475 USD. Back to our hard drive. Focusing on the hard drive, I got a four terabyte Seagate Barracuda. This is a $80 hard drive for four terabytes and an RX 6750. Now we will be comparing all these graphics cards at the end just to show like any trade-offs with the system. And if we focus on this SSD, we have our Crucial P3 Plus, it's a two terabyte NVMe SSD, it's a PCIe 4.0 by 4. And then we still have that 6750 XT. It is a little over our budget, but a few dollars for less performance. It's just not, it, it's fine. And moving on to our used components build. Everything here stays the same. This is focusing on our hard drive. I have a Western Digital 500 gigabyte mobile hard drive for 2369 hopping on ebay real quick we can see that you can buy an rtx 3080 right now for 450 450 plus tax and shipping 450 your best offer you can pretty much find an rtx 3080 for right around this one you can buy for 400 so you can buy it for right around 434 450 some are selling a lot more than that but these are all the buy it now prices your mileage may vary I was able to find an RTX 3080 for around 450 US. Now if we move on to our SSD use build. If you go for a used graphics card with an SSD, I was able to get an RTX 3070 with a 980 Pro 2 terabyte. Okay, editing me, this is for the RTX 3070 SSD first, then hard drive. So when choosing out the hard drive and the SSD for this one, you could go for the Team Group Vulcan Z. It's a four terabyte SSD for 142. Although I'm just gonna stay on the safer side and go for a two terabyte 90 Pro for 129 and then just grab a hard drive to fill the rest. Hopping on eBay. You can currently buy an RTX 3070 for 330, 330, 320, 350. Some auctions you would actually find for a little bit cheaper. And if we hop on over to the sold listings, we can find that They've sold for 200, 265, 273, 299, 280, 285. And then if it keeps going down, some of them actually sell for more, while some of them actually sell for that same amount of money. Now, I know I put 330 for this, and you can see that a lot of these are actually selling for less than 330. Your mileage may vary, and user, if you go to buy one right now, because we always use the buy now prices, even though I like to use an average of the sold, you can even do 250 for the graphics card which would give you another 100 and change to buy another 980 Pro. And to finalize our last list, we have a used graphics card, hard drive, and an SSD. Again, that 330 for that 3070. And we have an eight terabyte from Seagate, as well as a 512 gigabyte SSD from Team Group. Now, if you're able to find a 3070 for less than 330, then your money can actually go another hundred dollars towards an SSD, allowing you to have the ultimate build of, of an eight terabyte Seagate and a two terabyte 980 Pro. Now you don't have to get the two terabyte 980 Pro. You can actually go for a regular two terabyte 980 and just get another one of those and you're gonna have four terabytes for SSD. But this is just a general showing of basically what you can get. And don't forget, you can get some money actually selling off your GTX 1650. Alrighty, so let's get on to our graphics card testing. We're gonna be running a test to compare our GTX 1650, our RTX 3070, our RX 7700 XT, as well as our RX 6750 XT, and our RTX 3080 from our used. Now we will be breaking these up into 
maybe two or three different tests to compare each card. I might just do a high ranking of, let's say the 1650 versus the 3070. If the 3070 beats that, compare the 7700 XT with the 6750 XT and just keep building it that way. All right, I know this is a bit out of order, but we are comparing our RX 7700 XT with our RX 6750 XT. Now we can actually sit through the entire benchmark, but let's just give around a few. Alrighty, so in most games, the 7700 XT and the 6750 XT are actually close in FPS values. Sometimes the 6750 XT actually beats the 7700 XT, but most of the time the 7700 XT actually comes out on top. Now that we know our 7700 XT is our first winner, let us next compare our 3070 with our 3080. Now because these are similar with the 7700 XT and the 6750 XT, as in their one and then the other. It's probably going to be a similar record, but let's go check those out. So the number one thing about the RTX cards is there's a lot more stuff you can have enabled. Which will decrease FPS performance. Things like enabling RTX. Things like enabling ray tracing and stuff like that is actually going to cut your performance down. But it depends on the game as well, right? If we have 1080p RT reflections, we get around 60, 70 FPS in Cyberpunk. While the 3080 has 1080p RT Ultra and it gets right around 59. Moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn, this is 1440p Ultra. The 3080 gets around 20 more FPS than the 3070. And then here we have Red Dead Redemption 2 1440p max preset. We're getting, again, a 20-ish FPS increase for the 3080. So now we know that our 3080 for this test is in first with our 3070 in second, which going in, we actually knew that. Now let us actually compare our 7700 XT with our 3080 and then we can actually try to compare that with our 3070. All right here on Pixel Bench we're comparing the RX 7700 XT with the RTX 3060, 3070 and 3080. Uh, the only thing we really care about is the 3070 and the 3080 compared to the 7700 XT. All right, on 1440p Ultra, we have 187 for the 7700 XT, 190 for the 3080, and the 3070 is still sitting right around third place. Now, just like every other game, the graphics cards are game dependent. And there's a lot of varies in FPS for games. In some games, the 7700 XT beats the 3080, on 1440p Ultra, other games, the 3080 actually beats the 7700 XT. Even though the 7700 XT actually has two more gigabytes of VRAM, it's pretty much game very. All right, it seems in most games, the RTX 3080 will beat the 7700 XT. So it seems the way to go is the RTX 3080, the 7700 XT, and then the RTX 3070. So now that we know our clear graphics card winners, let's get back to our builds. So now that we know our graphics card comparison list with our 3080 on top, with our 7700 XT, and then our 3070, I actually did want to edit our list here. Now this is technically supposed to be our ultimate, 
because it has a better graphics card and a storage, which if you're going for both, I would go for probably trying to get a 3070 for like 230. It's not going to be possible. Like it's like you're going to have to do some digging with like auctions and trying to get them for that. More realistically, you'll be able to do maybe a 3070 for 330 with either heavy on the hard drive and lighter on the SSD or something like that, or just get an SSD and that 37. Or you can even just focus on the graphics card in its general self with just getting a base hard drive. But if we decided to get an RX 7700 XT on the used market, you can buy them now for 440, 500, 460, 480, 450. It's quite a lot more than the RTX cards. And if we switched over to the recently sold listings, we have 480, 560, 375, 450, 430, 450. So these are sitting right around the price of those RTX cards, actually. So if we decided to put 450 into our used graphics card build for this one, and I know this says 3070, but just let's do this for a second. If we put 450 for this, we're only able to have 25 more US when it comes down to using one of these. I'd rather just take the hit a little bit on that graphics card to get a 3070 and get more storage. But user, it's all up to you. It's all preferences. If you want to go graphics card heavy for this, I would go for the 3080 and just get a 500 gigabyte hard drive because in the end, you can always just get more storage rather than cutting down to maybe let's say a 3070 just to get more storage but remember these are all the used pricings so for our used winner we have the rtx 3080 <coughs> for hard drive for used graphics card and our hard drive and ssd we have our eight terabyte seagate with our team group And then for our new component, here we have our RTX 3070 with that 5 megabyte hard drive, which at this point is the same as just doing that 3080. <coughs> Whatever, 7700 XT with an SSD. <coughs> That's about it. I would not go for the 6750 XT even if you're getting more storage. So thank you so much for watching, user. I hope this really helped. I know this was a little confusing with all the different builds we do, but it's to show you guys that there's a lot more customization when it comes down to picking your build. If you're okay getting less storage now and just putting all the money towards the graphics card, it'll pay out in the end. Rather than getting a lesser graphics card because you want more storage now, and then you're under the standpoint of trying to then get more storage as well when that storage runs out, when you could have just bought a better graphics card. It's just an opinion, and don't forget, you can sell that GTX 1650 for however much you can get for it, and you actually use that in your budget. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the new year.